In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You may be seated. We will dismiss our children for Children's Church um, this morning. Praise God. Well, I'm glad to be here with you this morning. I'm glad uh, for the honor of getting to stand here in the pulpit and declare God's word. You know, there's, uh, you know, maybe it's more so me because I'm ministering, but there's a heavy presence down here this morning. I'm sure you can feel it if you're down here, but uh, it's just good to be in God's presence, amen, to give honor to it and recognize it and just have it working uh, in our service this morning. So I'm very thankful for that. Uh, you know, pastor has been talking to us about the renewing of our mind. Amen. How that we're to think, we're to think like the Bible tells us to think and not like we've learned in the world, not like we've learned from dad and mom or grandma, grandpa, our next door neighbor, coworkers, our best friend growing up, Right. God, when you become born again, God has supernaturally saved you because you were headed to hell. Without the Lord Jesus Christ, we were on our way to hell. So you thought like people that go to hell think, right? But when you come into the kingdom of God, it's God's desire that we start to think the way he thinks, the way he wants us to think, right? Right? And we, mean, we need to make sure that we don't take scriptures out of their proper setting, such as, you know, his thoughts are not our thoughts. That's true. They're not. I'm not perfection in the sense that we understand it like he is. Right. But that scripture is not at all telling us that we shouldn't endeavor to think like he thinks. Right. It's just telling us even as good as I ever get, it's still not going to be where he's at. Right. And. You know, pastor teaches on what I'm about to say a lot, and it's so important that we get it. I strive to get it. I, I strive to teach it to my wife, my children. I strive that they get it. But it's so important that we understand God's heart in the Word and not just letters on a page, because if all you have is letters on a page, you become legalistic and you don't understand what God is trying to convey to you. So people take scriptures like his thoughts are not our thoughts. And they, they say, well, see, I can't think like God does. I can't. That's not at all what that's saying. That's not the heart of what he's telling us. Amen. He's, he's telling us, look, your thinking is insufficient. <laughs> your thinking is not good enough. Right? Your thinking is not accurate enough. But mine is, God says. His is, right? So we should endeavor to start thinking like he does, right? I have so many testimonies in my life as we learn to walk with God to start thinking differently. I mean, just not realizing that the way I thought was bringing destruction to me. Because, number one, I had a heathen father. We've all got different upbringings, right? We've got different experiences. We come from where we come. My father, honestly, it, Miss Amanda tells her story, reminds me a lot of my father, except it was in a different arena and different things, and those details are not important. But the point is, it was heathenism. It wasn't the kingdom of God. My dad never once read the Bible to me. He never once prayed with me or for me. I never saw him pray. He never graced the doors of a church, except I, I remember two weddings as a kid of my sisters that he went to and barely made it through them and, you know, and would be out the door. So that, and you know, the, my dad was very worldly. So I grew up with a lot of that in me, right? So therefore, and we don't, there's no point in discussing all of those things and knowing all those things and making comparisons. The Bible tells us when you compare yourselves among yourselves, you're not wise, because what happens is, 
when we start comparing ourselves among ourselves, we start making excuses and justifications for, well, they didn't have it as bad as me. I've had it a little worse than them. So, you know, I, you know, I have a reason for being the way I am. See, that's not God. That is Satan teaching you how to think. That's what the Bible calls seducing spirits. Doctrines of devils teach those kind of things. Amen. Not only is your flesh doing it, but you're getting help. We're getting help from the spirit world. And, we, you know, I don't mean to sound like, you know, spirit world sounds spooky. But, guys, the, the, the spirit arena is, is just as real as us being here right now. Some people say more, and I say, well, I don't know about I don't know. I don't want to, you know, we don't want to critique that. But, and the reason I say that is because God created this too. Right? We're here too. This is where we live 99.99999% of the time. Right? But there are seducing spirits, devils that t want to teach doctrines to us about how to live our lives. See, that's 1 Timothy 4. If you don't know that, look it up and read it for yourself. Because I'm not going to turn there this morning. Because write that down if you want to look at it. But it's in there. Okay, It says, in the latter days, some will depart the faith, giving heed to those things. See? And we, as children of God, we don't want to depart the faith in any arena of life. This past Wednesday night, I taught at prison. And I told them, I encouraged them, I exhorted them, guys, I don't want to do anything in life that I can't feel comfortable that God's there with me. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. I want him there with me. I want to think like he's thinking, right? I want to act like he's acting. And we're inevitably, you're battling that all the days of the, your life. Is that right? You're going to because we're people, right? You ever got mad at your neighbor or the guy at the red light? I got a funny story I can't tell because it doesn't belong to me. But, and I don't have the right to tell their stuff. But I, when they told me, I laughed hysterically. Because uh, them and I are very close. And I thought, yeah, you're just, praise God, we can be real with each other. <laughs> Amen. How many of you know we're real people? How many of you are perfect? Well, I, Brother Josh, put your hand down. <laughs> Man, I, I saw clouds stir up overhead with lightning when that hand went up. No, it's like Brother Nick was saying this morning, I caught part of Sunday school. And he was talking about, guys, our, we should be much more aware of God in what we're doing than everybody else around us. And he was talking about not living in someone else's head, right? We can't afford to live there. We've all done that. Every one of us have done that. And if that, that time tries to, it'll come back. It'll try to revisit us. We just have to resist that, right. right? Amen. But God, when we came out of the world, you know, think about this. Why did he save us? Because there was a problem. <laughs> there was a big problem, wasn't there? That problem was me. That problem was I was lost. I didn't know him like, well, really at all before I was saved. I didn't know him. The Bible says the devil was my father. That's why I needed him to save me. Amen. So it's really kind of foolish or we don't mean to be foolish, but it's naive or really the best term is lacking knowledge. It's, it's an ignorant uh, th way of thinking in the true sense of the word to think that we would get saved and then just keep thinking how we ever thought acting the same ways, thinking the same ways, talking the same things, right? That's, God didn't call us to that. He called us out of that. Why? Not just to save us, but to deliver us. He came to set the captives free. Amen. Well, I was captive. Were any of you, were any of you lost and captive? I was. And here's the thing about it. I didn't even know it. I didn't even know it because it's all I knew, Right? I remember <laughs> it being young and it's so funny. You look back and you go, well, you, what an idiot. You ever done that? You ever look back and go, man, what an idiot. You know, I, it, listen, if you stay humble yourself and 
and, and, and you, you're honest with yourself and you can say things like that about yourself, it really don't matter what anybody else says to you. <laughs> I mean, so, so what? what? You think I'm an idiot? Get in line. I, I started this a long time ago. <laughs> Amen. I, I, was in, I was the first one in that line. Right? And that's, you know, see, we, we, we get so concerned about what do they think? What, how do, you know, what about this? What about that? When you're humble before the Lord, it doesn't matter. We're so concerned. Uh, here, here's another form of vain imaginations and not having a renewed mind. When you're overly concerned about people judging you, that, all that does is show your level of maturity. It shows that you, you haven't grown up yet like God has for you to. Amen. I'm up here this morning. Every one of you are judging me. And that's perfectly fine. That's all right by me. Because listen, whether I get upset about it or not, whether I recognize it or not, whether it's true or not, it is. Amen. And so you can, you can run yourself crazy in your mind and worry about you know, what, what people are judging you or not and have a, 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 um, a mixed up mind and not even be able to be sober in your thinking because of that type mentality, or you can be free. Yeah. Amen. I love freedom. Amen. I like to be free. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Praise God. I like liberty. Yeah. Amen. I don't like being bound up by anything. Do you? Yeah. I don't. I don't. And we, God has called us to come out from among the world. Be separate. Touch not the unclean things. 2 Corinthians 6. I'm quoting scriptures that I'm, we're not turning to because we got other ones, but you can write them down if you want to. 2 Corinthians 6 tells us, come out from among the world. Be you separate. Touch not the unclean thing. I'll be your God and you'll be my people. Amen. Praise God. I like that. I want to be on that team. Listen, I've been on the other team. I was on the other team and I'm not, you know, that it stinks. It stinks. I remember I had some running buddies, uh, you know, when I was a teenager, I had some running buddies that I run with all of you probably had, right? You ever had your running buddies, three or four guys I was with all the time, right? Well, when we became grown, I still ran with them. We did our thing, right? We ran around doing what we thought was fun. Is that right? Because it was to us. We were having fun, right? And um, when, you know, Tammy and I had been married about five years, and I still ran with some of them and, um, you know, and did some things I shouldn't have been doing. Uh, and um, we got in church, started serving God, and, and just a few years went by. And, I, and I'm, I'm telling you, God just changed me rapidly, in those first few years, I was hungry for him. I didn't want to be who I was anymore. You know what I mean? Now I say that I didn't want to lose my personality, who Chad was, who God made me to be. I still have all that, right? We still, we, I, I still have, I like to have fun, cut up and kid. And you know, I still have those things that are good, right? But I was out in town one day and I hadn't seen one of my running buddies in quite some time. And uh, it was so funny because you know how when you're talking to somebody, you can hear about what they're saying. They don't even really know how to put things in words, but you can hear the heart of what they're saying and you look it in their face and you can see that they're, they're recognizing something. So I'm, I saw him over here at a hardware store and he, he, we were talking, we were sitting there for a few minutes and he was kind of just glaring at me, you know, and, and I'm noticing that and I'm watching him and he goes, he said, man, you're not the same. He said, man, you're, you're, you're not the same. You're, you're different. He said those words. And inside I went, yeah, praise God. Praise God. I mean, inside I just welled up like a giant on the inside. Praise God. He's noticing it. God's doing it in me. I'm changing. Amen. Praise God. Wonderful, wonderful encouragement. And I said, I said, that's right. I said, man, I said, I serve God now. Yeah. We walk with God. I live for God. And, and started, you know, just talking to him. I was so excited to tell him I'm a, I'm a new creature. I'm not the same. Yeah. I'm not that person. Yeah, you're right. I'm not that carrying on ding dong that you used to know. Right? I'm not that anymore. Amen. 
But he could see that Chad had changed, that there was a change in me. What was that coming from? The renewing of my mind. That was, that was coming from me hearing the word of God, letting faith activate in me, believing upon it, and then acting upon what I had heard. Amen? This is why it's so important that we listen to what pastor's teaching, what elders like me teach. Don't, don't, I was, Friday night during prayer, I almost came over to Miss Manda and said, Miss Manda, do you mind if I exhort for just a minute because I had something on my heart? And I thought, well, now I'll just wait. I'll do it Sunday. And she might have said yes or no. It don't really matter. I decided not to. Yeah. So, but I want to encourage us this morning. And I was telling my wife this yesterday. Listen, uh, Pastor Chris, the elders, people, you know, people that, that stand in a position of authority, um, I want to encourage you with something that we, like it was said during prayer Friday night that we don't want to become overly familiar right. with them so that we just think, well, that's just them saying that. That's who they are. That They say that all the time. Right? right? Yes, because what you'll do is you'll keep faith from activating in your life. Yes. You'll keep faith from working in you in the areas that you, you seriously need it working in. My wife can tell you, we were talking about something with, you know, we're elders, so we're talking about something. And I said, I said, babe, I don't understand some of these things. I said, because I'm 49 years old. I'm, you know, I'm a little bit older than Pastor Chris, 15, 16 months, whatever it is, older. I said, but every time I'm around him and we're talking elder meeting or whatever, I'm listening to what he's saying. I'm hearing what he's saying. Right? And he treats me with the utmost respect, and I'm very thankful for that. But when I hear him saying something about the kingdom, I hear him saying something from the pulpit. My antenna's up all the time, all the time. Amen. Listen, now I don't, as you grow in God, every, you're not hearing as much as you used to because you've grown in those, some of those major areas. Let me, let me say that a little more clear because I don't want somebody leaving thinking I'm saying something that I'm not. I'm not saying as you mature in God, you don't hear the preacher anymore the pastor anymore. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying as you grow, you develop in God, you, you jump some big hurdles as you walk with God that now you don't, you no longer deal with those hurdles. Does that make sense? But I always have my antenna up to everything he's saying and the things that even the things, <laughs> even the things that I don't have right. All right. I'm not stupid enough to say, well, that's just pastor Chris. That's how he is. He, that's just his bandwagon. Never, ever, never, ever, never, 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 ever, never do I do that in my heart. I'm smarter than that. Okay? See, an unrenewed mind does that. Well, you know, they say that every other service. <laughs> Get your antenna up. There's a reason why he's saying that every other service. And it ain't because he likes to hear himself talk. And I can almost hear some hearts. Oh boy, he's just up there puffing up pastor. No, that, if you know me at all, Miss Matt, is that me at all? No. I'll tell you as straight as an arrow, you just ask. I don't care what your title is or what your name is. Just ask me, you're going to get it. Ain't that right? That I'm going to tell you the truth if, if, I, if I've got it in me. Amen? I don't even know why I'm talking about this, really, other than it seemed good. Because it's the Spirit of God. But it's the truth. See, I, why can I say that stuff and be blunt like that? Because I have a clear heart. I, I love Pastor. Right? I, when he's talking, ding, 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 my antenna's up. Now, I'm not good at doing all of it. Right? Are any of us? I don't need to put you in my category for me to be wrong. I'm not good at doing all of it. It's, that's not what I meant by saying that. You understand where I'm coming from. Because I sincerely don't care. I, re I really don't. What, what about that, uh, the opinion of that? I'm just being honest with you. But when he's talking, I'm listening. Amen? You know, we've had a couple of fellowship lunches lately. 
And, um, you know, it's supposed to be just fellowship. And it is. It is. In his heart, it is. But I'm listening to everything he's saying. I'm receiving everything he's saying. I want to hear it. Why? There's something in there that I can get something out of it. Right? Because there's an honor in my heart for who he is as the pastor. Right? So I encourage us, don't let an unrenewed mind make you think that's just pastor. That he's just saying that again. If he's saying that again, it's because I believe it's the heart of God. Somebody still not heard it. Somebody still needs it. Right? Everything. And I'll tell you what I do a lot of times. I'll sit over there and I'll amen the things that I know he's talking to me about. Why? By faith. Not because I got it together, but because it's truth. You amen. And you, you, when you have a renewed mind, you agreed with what is truth. You agree with what is accurate, what is righteous. When you have a sound mind. Well, that's making me look bad. Big deal. Get over it. It's making me look bad too. Amen. It's making me look bad to the most important person there, me. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's, that sounds one way, but I mean it another way. But that's why it's funny. What I mean is, look, I, I get more embarrassed of myself than I do what, you, you, you're, what you're thinking of me. See, when you're, when, uh, I, want, I want to say something. I want you to hear this clearly because this, what I'm about to say is really good. And I know, I know how that sounds too. <laughs> but now listen to me. The, when you're a mature Christian, I didn't say you had it all together because none of us do, right? But when you are a mature Christian, the person that you judge the most is you, is you. The one that you're the most, you're the biggest critic of is yourself, when you walk with God, because if you walk with God, he's always pointing fingers. Do this, better attitude, smile better, look better, talk better, say that better, act better, look, right? When you walk with God, God's doing that. So when you walk with him, it matures you. And the person that you're judging the most is you, right? I've sat and helped many people and they say things about me and I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, oh, I know you're right about that. Yeah, okay. Well, hey, all right. We both know it now. Okay, let's move on, right? Why? Because we, we already know it. What? See, Paul said it's a small thing that you judge me. Right? God's doing it. God's judging me. You don't have the power to bless or curse, do you? No, I know you don't. Right? See, but God does. Amen? So an unrenewed mind will be overly concerned about how somebody's judging them. Really? That's what you're worried about? What somebody else is thinking? Really, that, that's, our, that's our big deal? What somebody else is thinking about, I wonder if they'll like what I wore this morning. Now, if you're like me, sometimes you're not good at coordinating stuff. You ask your wife. And, and then I still, sometimes I say, well, I'm wearing it anyway. Because <laughs> I just want to. I did that this morning. But I let, her, I let her win out this morning, didn't I, babe? I don't have it on. It's different, right? <laughs> right? But... <laughs> Honestly, you want to know the truth? I, I, in my closet this morning, I thought, I don't want to wear something that doesn't look right, that might reflect negatively on my wife so that other women think, what is she letting him out of the house like that for? <laughs> Hand of the Bible. Hand of the Bible, honest to God truth. That's why I did it. That's why, that's why I didn't wear what I was going to wear because that's the real reason. I, I don't, listen, I'm not worried about you judging me. I don't want her being judged because I love her. Love covers a multitude of sin. Amen. Right. Love covers those. Love is looking to take care of those. Right. I want her to look good. Look at her. She's beautiful. Look at that dress. She, that's my style right there. That dress. She looks good. I get to look good. Right. So I don't want to stand up here with weird looking colors on them and the women going, what was Miss Tammy thinking? Right. What was she thinking? Letting him out of the house looking like that. Well, I do it sometimes for fun. I wear it just to see people, because that's just me. I don't care. It's fun, right? But an unrenewed mind, see, when your mind is unrenewed, you're, you're worried about everybody else's judgment. If you were judging yourself the way you should be, theirs wouldn't even matter. Amen? See, that's, where our, that's what a renewed mind does. 
A renewed mind criticizes itself. The Bible tells us, more scripture here, to walk circumspectly. Amen. That means like walking around yourself, like this is yourself, and you're walking around yourself and you're looking yourself up and down and you're looking for flaws. Not, now, the problem with that is if, if you're immature at that, you have to start out a little bit at a time because you're not mature enough to handle that level of scrutiny. You'll get in condemnation. you get beat up. And that, so you have to start, right? You have to start. You have to start somewhere. But, you know, walking with God, growing in God hurts. It hurts your flesh. It hurts your heart. It hurts your emotions. Amen. I've had my feelings hurt so many times. I mean that. I'm serious. You know, they might, that may sound strange coming from me. I don't know. As, as I was saying that, I was going, do people think you have feelings? I don't know. I do. I have lots of them. I have lots of emotions. Men handle them different, right? We, we handle them different than women, but they're there. And walking with God, I've had my feelings hurt so many times by my leaders, by God correcting me, right? By, you know, just things not going the way I thought, involving my children, right? You ever had your feelings hurt involved your children? Right? But growing in God is going to produce that. Walking with God is going to produce that, right? See, I have, I have girls the same age as Miss Amanda. We have kids about the same age, right? We, we ha, there's things going on, right? We got to be careful that we're mature in those things. Amen? Yes, but growing in God always produces, it'll produce pain in us. It produces a, a uh, real growth with God. Uh, produces a, uh, God will demand that we don't, obey that hurt and that pain and change anyway. I've been there so many times. Have you ever been there? I've been there so many times, but it's a, it's a good thing. You, you get to where you're addicted to it. In a sense, you get to where you, you, you've learned, you've got the experience. The Bible tells us that we're to have our senses exercised to discern good and evil, right? See, when you're immature, you think God's correction is evil. Have you ever been there? I've been there. When you are, when you're immature, when God's correcting something, it feels evil. Why? Because it's causing pain. It's causing hurt emotions, hurt feelings. Um, you want having to do something you don't want to do. Amen. And, and your, your flesh and your heart and immaturity will talk you out of doing those things. Want it. It will. I've been there many, many times. Now I'm, I'm thankful that I, you know, we probably, you know, we all like to think we're better than we are. And I do that too. We all do that. But, I, you know, as honest as I know how to be looking back over my, my walk with God, I've had a pretty good track record of obeying the right and walking by faith and not by feelings, walking by faith and not by sight, choosing the hard thing. Amen. Choosing the thing that hurts, the things that rakes me over the coals. Another thing, you know, that in, in the, the renewing of the mind will help us with is when, when your mind is, is getting renewed, and, and we're all in a continual process of getting our minds renewed, okay? We're never there, right? We, there's things that still I have to talk to my mind, tell it to shut up, right? No, I'm not going to think like that. I'm not going to act like that. I'm not going to behave that way. Why? Because it's not the right thing to do, right? And I don't want to displease God. But as, as we walk with him, as we, we are continually renewing our mind, you start to recognize when God's correcting you. And it's like that, you get that, in, in, for me, it's in, in my belly. I get this kind of sick feeling of, you know, Lord, uh, yeah, I was wrong for that. I'm wrong for that. And, and it, it's a good kind of hurt. You ever been there? It's like, ah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Lord, you're busting my chops on that one. Yeah, oh, that feels good. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. A renewed mind learns to think that way. And you truly do feel that way. You truly do start to think that way. You truly do start to emote that way because you're growing up. 
in God. I remember when I first started walking with God, all those hurtful things, I, I remember feeling like this. And, and, and you may be there today. And so if you are, let this help you because there's hope. But I remember first starting walking with God, I didn't, I didn't understand correction. I didn't. Um, my, my father didn't correct us the way you need to be corrected. Okay. So I didn't know what it really looked like. Okay. And so when, when correction would come my way, whether it was through a leader or God himself or, or whatever the case may be, or through the word, it was like, whoa, 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 what, what is this? You ever been there? It's like, what, what, is this, what is this pain I'm feeling right now that I don't like? You, this correction hurts. This correction feels bad, right? Have you ever experienced that? that that's a very real thing. But, and, and you're like, well, you, you resist it. You turn away from it. And even when God's trying to correct you with something, you'll run away from the very thing he's trying to help you with if you're not careful. Why? Because it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. And we are fleshly carnal people and we like to feel things. And there's nothing wrong with feeling things. You like to feel good. I like to feel like my wife loves me, right? I like to feel like my kids love me, like, I, I, right? Nothing wrong with that. But correction is not supposed to feel good to your flesh. Right. Hebrews 12, right? Hey, when it comes, it doesn't feel good. It feels grievous, right? And it hurts. But if, see, an unrenewed mind will resist that and walk away from that or run away from that or push that away or push those people away because it doesn't like the hurt. Amen? Amen. But uh, growth in God looks like hurt sometimes. It feels like hurt. It feels like pain. That's why the Bible tells us, be not conformed to this world. See, we're living in a society today, guys, where that we're... Our society and culture wants us to do everything based upon how we feel. Wants us to think everything we do based upon how we feel. Every, every, every decision you make, how do you feel about it? Right? Is this right or wrong? How do you feel about it? And I understand the expression, if me and Pastor are talking, me and Dr. C, whoever we're talking, how do you feel about this scripture? How do you feel about that? And that's not what I mean. Okay? I'm talking about... How does this make you feel? Not like, what do you think is the proper interpretation of this scripture? That's not what I'm talking about, okay? But what our society and our culture is trying to train us, that we should make our decisions, all of our beliefs, everything we're thinking about based upon how we feel about it. Whether we feel sorrowful or not. Whether we feel compassionate or not, right? Whether we, we're taught, hey, you know, if you, for example... If you are faced with a situation where someone asks you, hey, how do you feel about homosexuality? Well, the Bible says it's wrong. And I believe the Bible. Well, you're, you're wicked. You're wrong. You're, that's hate speech. I had somebody tell me, I was having a conversation with somebody. They were telling me that. That's, that's hate. You're just filled with hate. That's just hate. This speech. I said, no, I, I don't hate it all. I love people with all my heart. I said, I love them. I don't, I don't want them in that. But listen. Fornication outside of marriage is sin. I don't get to feel about that either. God says it's wrong. The Bible says it's wrong. A renewed mind knows those things. But see, society wants us to train, train us and teach us that we're to base those, our morality off of those feelings. Right? But we can't afford to do that because you'll be out of the will of God. You'll be wrong with God. Now, I have absolutely nothing against anybody in, that's sinful. Personally, as a matter of fact, if you knew the truth about me, you'd know when I'm out here doing my thing where I'm at during the day, those are the people I'll get up to and love on the most. I absolutely will. Why? I'm not afraid of them. I don't have a phobia. I'm not worried about them as far as I'm concerned. I'm worried about where they're going to spend eternity. I'm worried about whether they're right with God or not. Amen. Because they're not. If they were, they wouldn't be living in those sins. Just like if you're living in fornication outside of marriage, you're not right with God in that area. Yeah, right. Amen. And God is good and merciful and patient and kind. Gives us, he'll, you can live that way and he'll give you time to get it right. Amen. Because yeah. he's good. He's gracious. He's long-suffering. Right. You might say, well, what do you mean God will give you time to get that right? Listen, isn't the earth full of sinful people right now? Yeah. Has he came and destroyed it yet? Has he came and brought down the fire from heaven yet? Has he... Let the sword go with his mouth yet and devoured? No, he hadn't done that yet. He's good and merciful. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
And so don't, don't be so foolish in your thinking as to confuse the world's way of thinking with proper biblical thinking. We don't, you don't hate anybody if you love God. If you're right with God, you, you're, just, you're full of love for everybody. Amen? And you want them right with God. So we're not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And I love this because it's dear to my heart because I've been transformed by my mind's renewing. Amen? Not in every area, but I'm still working on some things, right? We're still doing it. But like pastors taught us, this word renew means to renovate. I love that. I found, I found that years ago when I teach that at the prison a lot. Hey, that, it's, it's such a good illustration. You've got an apartment, right? It's old, raggedy, green carpet. You go in there, man, this is, nobody's going to want to live here, right? This place stinks. And, and so you go in and you take all of that junk out. You, you, you come in, you, you take all the carpet out, all that stuff. You put the kilts on the walls. You throw on new paint, new cabinets, new hardwood, whatever. And you've got a new place. Well, that's God's picture for our mind. That's what he wants for our minds to get all that old junk out that we have always thought or used to think and be renewed in our minds to have a, a new, uh, a new brain up here, as it were, you know, a new mindset of thinking. I tell the guys in prison, I say, guys, listen, you don't have to think the way you've always thought. You don't have to think that just because you've always thought this way, that it is the best way, that it is the correct way, right? And just because mama or daddy thought that way doesn't mean it's the best way, that it's the right way, see? But if we're not careful, we just, we have always thought this way. I just think I'm right. I just think I'm right. I just think, well, slow down and let something else talk to you for a little bit. Slow down and let something else, listen to someone else and what they're saying. Hear what they've got to say. Dr. Cephas and I, we talk doctrine a lot. We, Tammy can tell you if he comes to my house, that it, we just talk because we're buddies. Right? And we love the word. We, love, we will talk and talk and talk and we'll go back and forth with the scripture and back and we just talk. And, and, but see, I'm not closed off to what he thinks. I'm listening to him. I'm listening to how he's interpreting this scripture and what he's saying to me about it, right? I'm, I don't have a way of thinking, well, that's not what that means. Well, let me hear what you got to say. Let's look at it. Let's examine it. You might have some truth here. There's some facets of it that there's some truth to. Remember pastor teaching about the diamond, right? You know, I use my wife for this all the time. We'll be talking about things and I'll say, babe, what do you think about this? Let me hear your perspective because I've already got mine, right? I've already got mine. And, and it never fails. She'll say things. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it, it, why? It brings a proper balance. But she, see, she, it helps me renew my mind, right? To not only my way of thinking, but to hear what she has to say, right? And she does the same for me. She should do more of it. I'm kidding. That's me having fun. But, but see, and she does. She's very submitted to me and very lovely and all those precious things that I need. Amen. But so we, we don't want to have this mindset. Well, this is just how I think. This is, this is how, well, bless God. That's what I think. And bless God. You know, that's just the way it is. And they're just wrong. You're putting yourself in a position that nobody will be able to help you. And you'll stay that way. You're going to train that into your children and you're going to ruin their lives. Are, are you listening to me? Yes, this is very important. I endeavor with all my heart not to train my children to think like that. I don't allow it. When they come to me, you know, it's amazing as a parent, you know, you feel like you're just always correcting and teaching and instructing. It's what you do. Is that not right? I was telling somebody this morning, Carter came to me talking about somebody that was from the Northeast, you know. And he was talking about their attitude and how they acted and this, that, and the other, right? Because we know a person from the Northeast. I won't say uh, where they're from, uh, but it's the same place Mark's from. So if you, know where Mark's, if you know where Mark's from, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, no, uh, 
But Carter came to me and said, Dad, you know, they're just not very friendly, Dad. You know, they, they said, I said, well, son, I said, that's not really that. It's not that they're not very friendly. It's that, you know, that's their culture where they come from. They talk differently. They act differently. They approach things differently. They're trying to do their job where they're at, and they're just organizing and orchestrating things. And I said, it doesn't come across as friendly like we see it down here. But I said, if you'll stop and think, but they're really not being unfriendly. It's just their demeanor. Right? But see, if we're not careful from our, our, the South, we think everybody ought to act like us. Well, they don't. Go to Iowa, right? They, they don't act like us. Or go wherever you want to go. But my, my point is, I was teaching him, what was I doing? I was teaching him to not be closed off in his thinking, to not overly judge these two men, because they're both from the same place. And I was teaching him to have a renewed mind. To not develop a way of thinking that's shut off and, well, bless God, they're just not friendly and I don't want nothing to do with them. Right? That's an unrenewed mind. But that starts as children. See? Not only are we trained wrong a lot of times, it's just the, the own carnal mind. Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 8 talks to us about our carnal mind, how it's the enemy of God. It does not think properly. Our natural mind does not think the way it should. See, and it will, it, even if you let your children just develop their own thinking, you're making a huge mistake. Because they have a carnal, natural mind that's going to formulate its own ideas. It's going to calculate its own reasonings. Right? And they're going to get messed up. Uh, I've, I, you know, I've said this before, and, and you've heard other preachers say this, because I think I have, but I've experienced it. I heard somebody tell me one time, well, they're, they're my kids. I just let them d decide what they want to think, what they're going to do. What they That's a huge mistake because they're a child. They're carnal. They're being influenced by everything in the world around them. And they're, take, they're watching this on this video, that on that video, this television program, this, this kid at school, that kid, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? They're not forming on their own. They're being baptized in everything they're around. Amen. That's like pastor talks to us about, you know, you, you, know, you see people that they get in this mentality and, they, and they, they're, they're different. This is just who I am. But yet you get 10 of them together and they all look exactly the same, right? They're not different. They're not who they are. They're like those other people. <laughs> they've catered toward that. See, they, they, they've, there's something that drew them toward that. And now they look just like these other people. Well, you can't let your children do that because if you do, they're going to look just like the world. Right? So I take every opportunity to teach my children, look, one, the main thing I do, my wife will tell you this, it's absolute truth. If my children come to me with any kind of a complaint, all right, about somebody outside our household, okay, the very first thing I do is I start talking to them about the part they played in it. I, I, I do, every, do I not, honey? Every single time. Okay. I've heard what you said. Now, what were you doing? What happened before that? How did you respond to that? Right? Why? Because I want them to have a renewed mind that's right with God, that's right with people, and that they're sound and sober in their thinking. Right? I don't want them diluted with the, uh, like Pastor used to tell us, the, the me firster mentality. It's me. It's all about me. Me, 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 right? And your name's not even Mimi. <laughs> for you young people, that used to be a name for women. There's people called Mimi, believe it or not. There was. <laughs> Somebody said, wow. That's good. <laughs> the people used to be called Mimi. That's the truth. But, but see, I want, what I want my children to do is I want them to judge themselves circumspectly. I want, to, I want them to look at themselves and see what they're doing. Where are you at? Where are you wrong? Right? Because the last thing in the world I want to do is put a, an American culturized victim mentality in my children. See? Somebody, you know, Pastor Vaughn used to say this. He'd, there was an old country song years ago. You guys probably don't know it. Brother Chris might, he's a little younger than me. You probably don't recognize this one. There was a song, and it was a real song. Pastor Vaughn didn't just say it. There was a song called Another Somebody Done Me Wrong song. Some people, that's the only song they ever, I think that's the only one they know. Somebody done me wrong. Well, listen, 
we can all sing that song. All day and all night. Amen. And you know what? I could sing that from morning until night, and probably 5% of it might be accurate. 95% of it, I'm probably not been done as wrong as I thought I have. Why? Because we have a carnal mind. That's why the Bible commands us to walk in love. Be ye kind one toward another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Amen. See, we, we want to hold everybody else to a standard that we don't even we can't even touch with our finger. Amen. We don't have the right to do that. Amen. I don't have the right to expect things out of my wife that I can't even get near. Amen. No, I do, but you know. No, I'm kidding. I don't. When I stand up here and tell you that she's wonderful and better than me, that's the truth. And I mean that with all humility. So I make these jokes because I know how goofy it is. And it's funny to me. And I like to pick. I've been married to her 30 years and I've spent 30 years picking at her. It's fun for me. Amen. But see, we, the, listen to this. Ephesians 4.32. Be ye kind one toward another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, forgave you. Amen. See, we 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 should not see when you when you're more critical of yourself than you are everybody else, you will live that way. But see, when you're always judging everybody else because you have to keep everybody where you need them so that they don't offend anything in you. But you don't you touch this and that and Bob, don't do go here and go there. See. That's, that's the exact opposite of a renewed mind. That's the exact opposite of maturity. Don't touch that. Don't go there. Don't do that. Right? I don't want anything in my life off limits to my wife. I want her to be able to say anything she wants to to me. Amen? Now, inevitably, there's probably areas she can't. Right? Because I'm, I'm just a man. I'm not a perfect person. Uh, and so, you know inevitably there's areas that she can't say something she'd probably like to be able to. But even in that, my heart's going, well, let's, let's God, let's fix whatever that is. Yeah, amen. amen. I don't want, I don't want her to be afraid to do it. What, what, hey, honey. And listen, if there's an area, listen clearly to this. This is a renewed mind talking to you. Okay. If there's an area that she can't do that, that's my fault. That's not her fault. Do you see that? Because people handle us based upon how we allow them to handle us. Amen. This is why I so value, and I mean this with all my heart. Again, Tammy knows it's true. Me and Dr. C, I, I, I value our relationship so much because iron sharpens iron. And we, we're just brutally honest with each other. We, we just tell each if we want, if you want, you know, hey, if, if you ask me, you're getting it raw. He knows that going in, right? I know that going in. And sometimes it, it's embarrassing. He said things to me and I'm go, man, you got to be wrong about that. That's what your heart is saying, right? You, this is the honest to God truth. I'm not making this up. We'll be talking in... And he would say something to me. He's judging an area of my life. And I say, in my heart, I go, I'm about to punch you in the nose. <laughs> I could do it real fast. It'd be, it'd be over with. Yeah. No. That's what your heart is doing. Your heart wants to defend itself. Right? But he that listens to his heart is a fool. Right? I love those scriptures. I love it. I don't want to be a fool anywhere. I, don't, I, I love those. I want to know, man, God, where am I a fool? Where am I a stone cold idiot? And I want to know these things. People, oh, uh, you shouldn't talk like that. You should. <sighs> the body of Christ needs to grow up. We're to grow up in God. Well, you shouldn't say that to me. That hurt my. I don't remember the last time my wife hurt my feelings. And she tells me straight. My feelings don't get hurt. I'm a grown man. I'm a child of God. I'm born again, blood bought, filled with the Holy Ghost and power. She don't hurt my feelings. I'm bigger than that. I'm tougher than that. 
And she says things that ain't good to hear sometimes. Because it's, it's a negative thing. Makes you look bad. You're embarrassed of it. You go, you really think that? Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> See, if you're honest with yourself, somebody else thinks that you already know it. You already know it. Amen? See? But an unrenewed mind, da 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 don't say that to me. I don't want to hear that. Don't, do, don't tell me that. Listen. They already think it. They already think it. Right? Is that right? They already do. It don't matter. Just, honey, bring the heat. Turn the, turn the what's that thing? Uh, the, the, no, the fire torch, like the, the flamethrower on. Just hit me right in the face with it. Melt my face off with it, babe. What is it? I want to hear it that straight. I really do. Because I don't, I don't want to be, number one, I don't want to be childish, but that's not my motivation. I want to be right with God. I want to hear the examination. Pastor and I, not long ago, we were sitting over here talking about something. He told me about myself and, and something, about, something about myself. And, and I was looking him right in the eyes and he's telling me and I'm going. Let's change the set. No, no, he's some, <laughs> telling me right in my eyes and I'm going. No, I didn't, I didn't have that attitude at all. Truth, I'm joking about it. But truth, I was going, praise God, I can fix this. I can work on this. this you're right. I already know you're right. I can, right? And he wasn't, even, he wasn't even being confrontational. If I hadn't asked him, he wouldn't have said it. I know him, right? I asked him about this particular thing. Why? It was already in me. I knew there was, there was things, something stirring there, right? And so he, he told me what he did, and I'm going, yeah, yeah, praise God. I can work on this. I can, now, see, you got a choice. You can, you can get embarrassed. You can get offended. You can get whatever, or you can grow. You can say, praise God, I can work on this. Amen. Amen. You know, it's like me and Dr. C's relationship. He's younger than me, about 10 years younger. So it's easy to get offended at people younger than you if they're speaking truth to you. Listen, if you can't listen to people 20 years your senior, you better get to working on that. I was trying to think of a way to say that. You're going to ruin your life. If you can't listen to people that's older than you, that love you, that want to demonstrate love toward you, and they want to help you. If you can't listen to that, you better get to working on that. You're going to ruin your life. And that's not a good thing. But see, you, we, God wants us to be able to hear from anybody. Your age doesn't matter. You say something that's truth, bless God, it's truth. Truth is what makes us free. Amen? Right? So... But an unrenewed mind does not think that way. Man, we haven't gotten any my notes. This happens with me every time. I, I told the Lord this morning, I said, Lord, I want to teach these notes. I want to go through all this, but whatever you want, Lord, as you say, sir, we'll do whatever you say. And this is what you get. <laughs> you. Yes, ma'am. I try. I, don't, I think sometimes I get down and I go, Lord, why can I do my notes? But I got these notes down here. But they're good. I'm talking about some of them. But, but God, guys, an unrenewed mind a, will not let you see things clearly. It will not let you hear what you need to hear. It will not let you uh, receive from God or anyone else what you need to receive. Correction is not a dirty word. Correction is a good thing. It just, it doesn't mean, it doesn't all have to be getting knocked around. Right? Correction is just, this is the course I'm going and this is the course I probably should be on. Right? It just means you just change course a little bit. But what I like about this uh, Romans chapter 12, I teach this at the prison a lot. It comes out differently there, but, you know, to, for the most part. But notice it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. That's the exact same Greek word in the Gospels where it talks about Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. That right before their eyes, when you look that up, he was literally changed right before their eyes. Okay? It was not a figment of their imagination. It was not th any of this. It was Jesus literally changed forms right there in front of them. Yeah. And Peter's looking at it and goes, you know, this is my best imitation of him. You know, he's going, my God, we got to build an altar or something. I, we we got to do something to honor this. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even know what just happened here, but we got to give honor to this somehow. We're going to have to sacrifice something or we're going to do something. 
right? Now that's my little uh, conjecture there. But that, you know, Peter said, hey, we got to build an altar, right? Why? Because he had just seen something that was in his mind, I guess, unreal, right? And I don't know why in the Gospels it was, you know, probably because the context is a little different, but in the Gospels it was, cha- it was uh, translated transfigured, but in here it's, it's uh, translated transformed, but it is the exact same word. It means the exact same thing. It means to literally be changed by the renewing of your mind. So that you come out on the other side of this thing while your mind's being renewed. You come out over here and you are a different person. You think differently. You talk differently. You act differently. You emote differently. You don't feel the same. My, I can testify to you. I do not feel the same. Act the same. I'm not the same person as 25 years ago. I'm not. I don't, I don't have to prove to you that I'm not. I don't have to do anything to demonstrate that I'm not. I don't have to... Um, I don't have to go around faking and acting like I'm not. I'm not. I've literally been changed by the word of God, by the power of God, by the renewing of my mind. Amen. It's a literal transformation. It's a literal change. It's not a, well, I wish I was right. Let me get around you and fake it so you think that I am. You, no, that's not what the will of God is. The will of God is for you to literally be changed. Amen. And if you hit your thumb with a hammer, sometimes you go, oh, God. Right? Why? Because you're a real person. Amen? Now, I'm not saying you cast or any of that. I'm just saying you're a real person, but you can be real because you're changed. You're not bogged down by the past. You don't have to be worried about whether somebody's going to think something all the time. Why? Because you're you're literally changed. You're walking with God. You're living right with God. Amen? And everywhere you go, you take that with you. Right? That's what God wants for us. And we can have it. But here's the key, and and Pastor says this a lot. It's so true. We have to trust someone else more than we trust ourselves. You have to. All we've got is ourselves. Right? You understand what I mean by that? I mean, we know ourselves better than we know anybody else. We know our experiences. We know how we felt. And when I was young, I was a fairly sharp guy. Just like I'm still a fairly sharp guy. Dementia hadn't set in and ain't going to in Jesus' name. I'm believing I'm going to stay sharp Amen. Amen. as I age. But I, I was a young guy, and I thought I knew a lot. And I did know some things, you know. But my thinking in the areas of life was skewed. It wasn't accurate. I didn't know how to think about being a husband. I didn't know how to think about being a father. I didn't. I, I literally, I didn't, I was basing, when the first five years of me and Tammy's marriage, I was basing what I did off of what, my experiences growing up. And if something was painful, I just wouldn't go anywhere near it. Yeah. Right? right? When I, here's the perfect example of that, of how our minds have to be renewed. When Caitlin was born, uh, I was scared to death of my dad growing up. He was an alcoholic, very violent, verbally and emotionally, uh, physically and verbally. He's liable to slap you at any minute. Seriously, that, that kind. <clears throat> I've been punched in the mouth, knocked flat on my back by my dad, okay, as a 12, 13-year-old boy. And so I was scared of him as a little boy because he'd get in these drunken fits. And so we, Tammy and I got married. She got pregnant with Caitlin. She had Caitlin. When Caitlin was old enough to walk and start being disciplined, there's Caitlin, started old enough to walk and being disciplined, I told her one day, I said, don't you lay a finger on her. Don't you ever let me see you lay a finger on her. If you do, you're going to deal with me. Why? Because I was scared to death of my kids seeing me the way I was afraid of my dad. So what did that produce? An unrenewed mind that wasn't trained properly, that didn't know that she needs a spanking when she needs a spanking. See? Why, what, what's, what's the importance of learning things like that? Because if you're not careful, you'll grow up and you'll train your children the same, with the same fears and insecurities you had. You'll live your life based on that way. They won't ever get fixed. They'll grow up immature. They'll live messed up marriages and lives. And then they won't ever have the renewing of their mind to walk soberly before God and with their spouse or children or whatever. Right? That's a mouthful, I know. But it's, it's the truth. Right? So I, I, that hurt my heart. I didn't want Caitlin to feel anything of any kind of hurt, any kind of cussing at, yelling at, hitting, slapping, spanking, anything that resembled something physical, I didn't want her to experience it. 
right? And my mind was unrenewed. And then I'm telling you, we, we got with God, started serving God. He wasn't just a few minutes. I probably spanked him more than anybody in here. <laughs> After we started serving God a couple of years, I got my mind renewed and realized, hey, we can do this. We got to do this right. Why? Because cause you have to train and discipline your children, but an unrenewed mind won't let you see that. It doesn't think soberly. So what we do, I'll end with this. What we do with an unrenewed mind, we, an unrenewed mind doesn't want to go anywhere near pain. If it hurts you, an unrenewed mind will stay away from it. Okay? Now, please balance what I'm saying. I, I'm not telling you if someone is abusing you, literally, I'm not telling you to go around them because a renewed mind goes around and lets somebody abuse them. That's not what I'm saying, right? I'm telling you that when your emotions are abnormal and out of control, what you do is you avoid hurt, even if the hurt is what you need to experience so that you can grow, so that you can grow up. I remember I have never spanked any of my children to where it did not hurt me, my heart. My heart hurts to do it. I don't like it. I don't like... How can I look at this cute little thing? Lord, how am I supposed to spank? You're, am I the only one? Look at those eyes. They're, the puppy dog eyes are looking at me and, and it hurts. It does. It hurts my heart. But I have to take that wooden spoon and pop, pop, pop. Why? Because it's the word of God. And I trust it more than I trust me. Amen. Amen. To grow in God, to have a renewed mind, we have to trust God, the word, and your disciples more than you trust yourself. Amen. Amen. And uh, I hope that's helped you this morning. We'll, we'll end right there. Uh, I know it has because it's the word and we've, we've talked about all kinds of scripture. Uh, but guys, God doesn't want us just to hear these things. He wants us to get them. I'm, I'm so thankful. And, and there's areas I still need to do. And I know that standing here going, I'm not good enough. I know that. But there's you know, especially in, in our young years as we're formative and growing up and becoming toward what God has us to be, there are certain things we need to grab a hold of. Get around the right people that can get them to us. Amen? And not, not steer clear of those things or avoid those things because they're painful. Because growth in God is painful. It's pain. Uh, it's like Pastor, you say, it's a death. It's death to your dreams. His dream of being a overseas um, you know, missionary that lived over in uh, De Beer, something, Sierra Leone. Yeah, De Beer's the diamond, yeah. But uh, walking with God produces elements of pain, but ultimately it's so rewarding. I'm so, I'm so glad to be transformed this morning from what I used to be. <laughs> to the, I, I haven't arrived, but I'm better. I, I haven't arrived, but I've got peace. I got joy in my heart. And, and praise God, that joy sustains you. Amen. So we're out of time this morning. We'll close with that. Um, bow your heads with me right quick. Bow your heads with me. Uh, maybe you're here this morning and the message has said something to you. Maybe the Lord's dealt with you. And it um, doesn't matter where the message is coming from if God wants to help us. Maybe you're here this morning, there's something you'd like to uh, let God help you with. Let, let his grace come upon you to help you in a greater way that maybe you've not been able to have on your own. If you would, raise your hand, and I'll, I want to pray with you. I see that hand. I see those hands. Praise God. I see. The, yes, I see those hands as well. Praise God. I'm going to pray for you, and then we'll all pray together. I want to pray for you. If you had your hand up, and maybe, maybe, maybe you didn't have your hand up, but you wish you would have put it up. You know, God is so good and so merciful. He, I, he's been so good to me in my life, and just over and over and over again. Uh, he, he wants. If God sees just gets just in the idea. Or that, that you might start to humble yourself and say, Father, help me just a little. He, he'll, he'll stretch his hand out. He'll help you every time. He's so good, so merciful. Father, I pray for these people that raised their hand and maybe even one or two, that four or five, ten that didn't. I pray for your graces and your mercy upon them. I pray, 
Father, you help us. Father, our minds can be such a weapon or they can be so detrimental to our success in life. Father, I ask you to help these people, help all of us, but help these precious people that raise their hands. Father, to, uh, to be able to slow down in their mind, to humble their heart and say, Father, teach me how to think. Put people in my life that can teach me how to think. Put people in my life that can help me think. Father, I pray that you help them, grace them, and help them out of these areas that they're hurting in, that they're suffering in, that they, they don't want to be in. Help us, dear God. We need you so much, Father. We, we're so dependent upon you. Let your graces be upon them. In Jesus' name. Keep your heads down, bowed, and your eyes closed. If there's anyone here, if you've never asked Jesus Christ to be the Savior and Lord of your life, if you've never, if you've never had that experience where, where you, you've said, you know what, I, I, need, I, I need help. I need to be saved. I need to be right with God. If you've, if you've never been born again, if you've never asked Jesus to save you, raise your hand this morning. I want to pray with you, pray for you. I'm so glad, I'm so glad I got saved. So glad. I don't see any hands. Um, you can open your eyes, raise your head. Uh, we'll, uh, I was telling Miss Manna this morning in worship, you know, I said, have you ever heard that statistic where they say, there are people that say that, you know, only about 10% of the population is actually saved, actually born again. And I think about those things. I'm so glad. I, I don't know if that's accurate or not. And I don't know that anybody really does. But, you know, we hear these statistics. I'm just so glad that I'm somehow or another I'm part of that 10% Amen. or whatever it is. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> that means, guys, you realize right now, it, right, the way the population stands right now, that's roughly 7.2 billion people that are on their way to hell, if that's true. Yeah. I'm not saying it is. I'm saying if. You understand. But Jesus said, broad is the way, wide is the path that leads there to destruction. Many there be that go in. Yeah. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leads unto righteousness. Few what does that mean? You tell me. It sound, don't sound good. Amen. But praise God. Uh, hope the service has helped you this morning. Come back tonight. We have pre-service prayer at 530, service at 6. We're having a night of worship tonight. Uh, Miss Kylie's going to lead us in a night of worship. and that'll, that'll be awesome. You'll enjoy that. Uh, and um, we'll have a good time, okay? God bless you. Come out this evening and we'll see you later.